Hey, you. I got something Big Shrimp doesn't want you to know. You see, shrimp can technically be kept in unrecycled tanks. In fact, that's how researchers keep them for their experiments. Now you know. The thing is, though, that hobbyists are not researchers. I don't know if that's a secret. I don't, I don't think it is. And so I'm going to stop whispering now because I don't know if either of us really like this situation. So let's, let's back up a little bit. This is Shrimply Explained, it is all in the name. When researchers keep shrimp in uncycled tanks, they have to do three things. First is 50 to 100% water changes one to two times a week with perfectly matching parameters. Two, they provide food constantly and they replenish it every eight to 12 hours. Third, they sometimes scrub the tanks one to two times a week. Researchers do all of these things because they want the most controlled environment possible for all of their experiments. This avoids any confounding factors in bacterial or microbial colonies that might develop between the different tanks. Most hobbyists have an entirely different goal, which is to keep healthy shrimp as cheaply and easily as possible. To do that, we need to establish a healthy ecosystem that lets nature take care of as much of the waste breakdown, water filtration, and feeding as possible. By doing that, we significantly reduce the amount of time and money it takes to maintain our shrimp tanks. It also helps create a more stable environment that is much better for our shrimp. In this video, we'll briefly cover what it means to cycle your tank, and then we'll go over different methods that you can use and explain why our extremely easy, simple four-step method is great for shrimp-only tanks. While we could just tell you the four steps right off the bat, understanding the background information and the reasoning behind each of these steps will help you make the best decisions for your tank. So with that out of the way, let's get into what cycling actually is. To prevent animal waste and organic matter from breaking down and creating a toxic environment, we need to set up the nitrogen cycle in our aquarium. This is done by introducing bacteria that then break down this toxic waste into less toxic components. The toxins we're talking about for one are ammonia, and then two, ammonia breaks down into nitrite, which is a slightly less toxic compound, but still not something you want in your aquarium. This nitrite breaks down into nitrate, which is relatively non-toxic, so you can have a much larger amount in your water without it harming your animals, but it still does need to be removed. The nitrate either gets removed mechanically via water changes, or it gets removed biologically by plants. They absorb nitrate into their tissue and use it to build up new cells. The bacteria responsible for breaking these toxins down are called nitrifying bacteria because ammonia, nitrite, and nitrate are all based on nitrogen. Now, these bacteria that we want get introduced in three different ways. One, they can come in on your plants. Two, they can come in through a pre-seeded filter. And three, they can be introduced via a commercial bottled product like Fritzyme. That being said, beneficial bacteria are everywhere, including in chlorinated tap water. They are incredibly likely to get in your tank no matter what you do, but adding objects or products to introduce more of them sooner helps the bacteria establish faster. Once these bacteria are introduced, they need time and resources to establish themselves securely in your tank. By resources, we mean an ammonia source. They need food in order to establish themselves. That's where the cycling process comes in. There are a lot of various ways to cycle a tank. The two most popular ones are the fish-less cycling and the fish-in cycling. The fish-in cycle uses a live fish as an ammonia source in the tank. Frequent water changes and testing are done to ensure that the ammonia doesn't build up to extremely toxic levels, but it still is extremely stressful for the fish, especially if done improperly. The potential harm to animals is why this process has to some degree lost popularity over the last few decades. The fish less cycle typically uses bottled ammonia as the ammonia source. This is a very controlled method of cycling because you know exactly how much ammonia you're adding into the tank. That being said, it still does require frequent water testing and potentially water changes if too much are added. The fishless cycle also doesn't create as stable of an environment as the method we're going to cover in this video. You see, shrimp are more sensitive to environmental changes than fish are, so a stable ecosystem is critical. That's why we use what we call the snail in cycling method for all of our tanks here. It's an extremely simple four-step method that creates a great environment for your shrimp. Before we get into how to actually do this method though, we wanna cover a few important factors that may affect whether this method is actually right for your tank. For one, as I'm sure you can guess from the name of this method, it uses snails. 
Now, some people absolutely hate snails, but I want to explain why they're so good for an ecosystem. Snails are an incredible cleanup crew. A really common problem for new shrimp keepers is overfeeding. If you have a bunch of snails in your tank, then they are going to take care of any food that happens to be left lying around so it doesn't rot and destroy your water parameters. This protects your shrimp, and while you could potentially have an overpopulation of snails, I'd say that's much better than your shrimp just dying. And if you don't overfeed, then you aren't going to have an overpopulation of snails. In addition, snails are invertebrates just like shrimp. That means they're sensitive to very similar compounds. So for example, you may have heard that shrimp are very sensitive to copper and certain pesticides. So by putting snails in our tank, we actually do a natural test for whether those might be coming in on the plants or present in our water. Basically, if your focus is on a low maintenance, healthy ecosystem, then snails and this method of cycling are amazing to establish that. Lastly, snails are really cool animals to have in your tank. They increase the biodiversity, but they also just do weird things. Like I'll see four of them for some reason stacked up on top of each other. I know they're having sex, but you know, let, I don't think about that too much. They'll be floating around on plants or they'll be getting like going on a roller coaster ride in the filter, or they'll be just walking on the surface of the water. They're derpy. They're great for an ecosystem. I highly recommend you try it out. Another thing to be aware of is that this method doesn't prepare your tank for a high bio load. Bio load refers to the amount of ammonia produced by your animals in the tank. If your tank is not prepared for a high bio load, then adding in too many animals at once may overload the bacteria and plants that are currently there and cause a cycle crash and ammonia spike. Most shrimp tanks have an extremely low bio load. Just know that if you're planning to put in a hundred shrimp in, immediately into a 10 gallon tank, or if you're planning to put in a bunch of fish into that same tank, then this method might not be for you and you should probably opt for the fishless cycle. To explain why these methods differ, let me give you a little analogy. So, <laughs> a little goofy, but follow me here. Let's take the earth. All of the plants and organisms on it are used to a certain amount of sunlight coming in. The plants use it to create energy via photosynthesis and then other organisms consume that energy. Now, what happens when a meteor strikes the earth? It comes in, just crashes into the ground, throws up a ton of dust that pollutes the atmosphere and reduces the amount of light that's coming down and actually hitting the plants. The plants might be able to adjust. The organisms that rely on those plants though will likely not get enough food and so they may be wiped out. That's what we've seen happen with the dinosaurs, for example. If all of a sudden an ecosystem stops getting as much energy as it's expecting, then that can have serious consequences all throughout the food chain. While extreme, that's kind of what happens for a fishless cycle if you're just having a shrimp only tank. You're adding in a bunch of ammonia, keeping it at about two PPM all the way until you add shrimp. And then you stop adding the artificial ammonia source and the energy available to your nitrifying bacteria just drops off. You'll have a tiny bit from the shrimp now, but they have a much lower bio load than you prepared your tank for. This means byproducts that the nitrifying bacteria have created are now not being released in the environment. Any bacteria or microorganisms that relied on those byproducts are now destabilized. One example of this is the relationship between Pacillomonas and Nitrosomonas bacteria. The Nitrosomonas release pyruvate as they break down ammonia, which the Pacillomonas uses in its metabolic system. If that pyruvate is no longer being made, then the Pacillomonas population needs to adjust to that change. The same thing is true for plants when they no longer have the same amount of ammonia. So you're kind of almost resetting your tank right at the same time that you want to be adding shrimp and when you want it to be the most stable. The snail in method is different because what it does is immediately put the snails into the tank, let them establish and eventually grow their population to whatever food is available in the tank and whatever you're putting in. That way, there's a very set and stable bio load. So when you do finally put shrimp into your tank, there may be a slight increase. It's very easy for your tank to handle. Again, this is assuming you aren't adding a ton of shrimp per gallon at a time. Don't do that and you're gonna be good. If you have any questions or if I haven't convinced you that this next method is going to be potentially better for your ecosystem, then leave a comment down below. I'd love to chat with other hobbyists and have a great conversation. Okay, now the moment you've all been waiting for, the simple four step method for cycling your shrimp tank. First step, first step, first step. Set up your tank. 
Pretty straightforward. Get all your substrate, your filter, your heaters, your plants, your water too. Whether you're using dechlorinated tap water or purified and remineralized water, get that all into your tank. After setting up your tank, then measure all the parameters in it. Check your pH, your GH, your KH, ammonia, nitrites, and nitrates. All of these are critical. And if you aren't familiar with, especially GH and KH can be two that maybe fly under the radar. Those are so important. You can use the Neo Caridina parameter checker to understand what healthy ranges are and how to achieve them. These ranges also work for ghost shrimp, a mono, bamboo, vampire shrimp, although they do not work for caridina shrimp. Once you've gotten your tank all set up and you've recorded your parameter measurements, then it's time for step two, adding snails. Snails and the little bit of food that we give them release ammonia and feed the beneficial bacteria to let them establish. You can get snails from your local fish store or other hobbyists, but oftentimes snails come in with the plants. You can treat your plants, but bladder snails and ram's horn snails are actually just really tough. They can survive a ton. They're often considered pests because they can reproduce a lot, but they only do so if they're overfed. Now, some of you might be thinking, how is this really different from a fish in cycle in terms of animal cruelty? In some cases, for some snails, it is the same. Rabbit snails, mystery snails, nearite snails, these types do not handle high ammonia levels as well. And in that case, while you're setting up your tank, you will want to add some bottled beneficial bacteria like Fritzyme to kickstart the cycle and prevent really high ammonia levels. On the other hand, bladder snails, ram's horn snails, pond snails, all of these have been shown to be able to handle extremely high levels of ammonia. For example, one study showed that ram's horn snails reproduce in up to five milligrams per liter of ammonia, and they can actually grow in up to 20 milligrams per liter of ammonia. Now, your tank should not see such a high level. It should be less than about four to five milligrams. And so these snails are perfectly happy. They do not care. They're again, extremely tough. We actually recommend bladder, pond, or ram's horn snails because you really don't have to worry about ammonia levels whatsoever. These snails, in addition, can reproduce quickly. So if there's a lot of food in the tank, then they can grow and create an adaptive bioload that forms a very solid base of ammonia levels to maintain this beneficial bacteria and create a stable ecosystem. So how many of these do we want to add? If you're going to be going with one of the types that reproduces by itself, for example, bladder snails, ram's horn snails, pond snails, you really only need one. Now, I would suggest potentially adding, getting two, three, four, if you can, but it doesn't matter how big your tank is, throw these in, they're going to be fine. If, however, you want mystery snails, rabbit snails, or nearite snails, then we'd suggest adding about one to two for every 10 gallons. On to step three, which is the grow up period. So you've got your tank set up, you've added your snails, now you just need to feed them periodically. For that, we recommend adding some shrimp or snail food one to two times a week. If you see a buildup, then stop feeding for a little while until it's all gone. Do this for about six to eight weeks. Six to eight weeks? I can cycle a tank in a week with just some bottled bacteria and ammonia. Why the hell would I ever do this method? Nitrogen is just one nutrient in a tank. There are cycles for phosphorus, for sulfur, and every other macro and micronutrient while these other nutrients aren't as toxic as ammonia, they're still important and their buildup can be a problem. It can lead to more algae growth and it can lead to an imbalance in an ecosystem. In addition, plants and other microorganisms need time to establish. You can cycle a tank in a week, but that's just the nitrogen cycle. Your plants could be unhealthy and dying, and then they'll eventually release extra ammonia and cause your cycle to crash. Giving your tank this time to just build, create a stable ecosystem, is so important. So six, eight weeks, I promise this patience is gonna pay off. Check your ammonia levels about a week or so after adding snails into the tank. If ammonia gets too high, say above four to five PPM, then that can prevent nitrifying bacteria from establishing as well as they otherwise could and could potentially stall your cycle. If ammonia levels do increase above that level, then just perform some water changes to bring it down below four to five PPM. The signs that you're looking for to know that your ecosystem is establishing well are a little bit of algae, microorganism activity. In addition, lastly, is healthy growing plants. With these three signs, you will know that your tank is a very stable ecosystem that's going to support your shrimp. We understand these are a little bit different than the signs you might otherwise hear about looking for, 
for example, just making sure that there's no ammonia, no nitrites, and that some nitrates are present in the tank. So these signs are a little more qualitative than quantitative, but they are quite visible if you know what to look for, and they're very worthwhile. All of that is explained in a previous video. On to step four, which is testing your water. During the six to eight week period of grow out, your tank parameters are fluctuating quite a lot. It's not even necessarily something that we can measure, but it's there and it is less stable. One example of this is the ammonia, nitrite, and nitrate concentrations. As you can see on the graph on the screen, the ammonia peaks early, then as the nitrifying bacteria that process ammonia start to establish themselves, that drops and the nitrites start coming up. As the nitrifying bacteria established that take care of nitrites, that starts to go down and you start seeing a nitrate spike. Again, the nitrates get removed either via plants, especially floating plants, or they can also be removed by water changes. Make sure that there's no ammonia or nitrite for at least a week before adding your shrimp, and also make sure the nitrate stays below harmful levels. For most shrimp, keeping the nitrate below 20 ppm is highly recommended, and if you can get it below 10, that's even better. If nitrates are high, then do a water change to remove them. In addition, check your pH, your GH, KH. All of those parameters are very important. If you have questions about them, if you aren't sure about the healthy ranges, use that parameter checking tool that we have linked down below. If you've seen all those signs that we mentioned in the grow out phase, along with at least a week of no ammonia, no nitrites, and acceptable levels of nitrates, then it's time to add shrimp. When adding them, be sure to acclimate them slowly. You can view our other video on drip acclimation, which should be popping up here if I do this thing right. Otherwise, that's the really easy way of cycling your tank. Just by waiting, giving yourself some time, and letting your ecosystem establish with a good cleaning crew like snails is going to make your shrimp keeping journey so much easier, which is what we want to do here. We want to make your journey shrimple. <laughs> so if you like that sort of thing, then hey, subscribe to the channel, support us. We'd absolutely love to have you. If you want to talk about anything, please leave that in the description below. If you want to read and learn more about shrimp, then feel free to head on over to shrimplyexplained.com where we've got a bunch of resources for you. Otherwise, that's it. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a great rest of your day.